What's up guys and girls, um, another video for you today. Um, in this one we're going to be covering um, well, pretty much something that you would almost have to face when you're doing a ECU installation. Unless of course you got a plug and play ECU. Um, we're going to be covering putting a base map on your car and basically getting your car started from that base map. Um, most ECUs would have a base map for your configuration in case you don't. Uh, I'll show you briefly how I usually get my car started um, from scratch or from a base map of some sort and I tailor it to my car from there. What we have is the Tuner Studio software. We have this open. This is the software Speedwino runs on. Um, what you see here is the interface on my display right on my laptop. Sorry. It's because I already have a tune on my file. My car is already tuned, but I'm just going to go through the process of getting you started. Um, as you can see, my coolant temperature is reading about what we have out there now, between 28 and 40 degrees. Intake is a bit higher. It's always usually about a degree or so higher. So we go into file. Um, in this, I'm not going to the directory. Load tune. I'm going to the directory where I have the base tune save. Speedwino does come with a base tune. So I usually use that. Well, I usually start from scratch. Um, let me get that open. It's kind of difficult to do with one hand. Ooh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, we'll pick up after I get this open for you. Okay, found it. Right here. Um, reference. Base tunes. Now we open up this tune right here. Yes. So it's going to be sending the tune to the speed window now. It usually takes a few seconds, uh, depending on how quick your computer is. <coughs> okay, it's going to ask you to cycle off and on. Usually you hit Control and W to do that. Yes. And if the mower the power of the internet that is already done right so how do you get a base map started um i will not have the time to go for every single setting but what you usually do you ensure your trigger settings are correct it is what your ecu uses to determine the actual timing of your engine and then usually i always tell folks it's easier to start an engine when it's richer than it needs to be than leaner than it used to be that is between reason, of course, I mean, we're going to be dropping a gallon of fuel in your car and expect it to start. But I mean, something slightly rich will start a lot easier than something slightly lean. So what do you normally change? You check your trigger settings. In this one, it will be whatever is on the base map. In that case, it's a 36 minus one wheel. I'm going to change that to what I need for my car. Yours will be different depending on what you're doing. Um, let me give you a look at the stock VE table. This is it. Pretty good looking table. Um, the spark table. Pretty conservative, but it will do for what we're trying to do here today. What you'll also need to do to get started is um, calibrate your TPS, calibrate your your coolant and your air temp sensor and also calibrate for whichever wide band you need to use right we're gonna skip to the next step after I enter all the settings that I know that my car uses for trigger and whatnot and my thermistors or coolant and air temp sensors we're back um, so I updated most of my settings a few things I need to stress you need to get correct or you won't have a start in this here uh, your board layout ensure you have the correct speed you know in my case i'm using the no2 c yes your i like i was saying your board layout ensure you have the correct board 
but this only applies for speedano and mega squat is used your rec fuel ensure you have that set correct and your spark settings ensure you have the appropriate settings i'm using just a distributor so we have here single channel um lastly before we start what i usually recommend is base map like this well pretty much any base map you're using you add oh it's a bit difficult to do with one hand mm, like so and we basically add i usually just add 20 percent fuel because you never you can never be too sure right should get us a pretty rich and safe base map to get started let me cycle I see on and off so the changes can be applied so take a second and we should be ready to start okay like I was saying we're about to start I'll turn my key on you should hear my pump prime no fuel pump prime let's investigate what happened okay let's try this again i got the pump to prime so you can hear it well that's my fuel pump but yeah i had a short prime um i know for sure this one is going to be very rich so what i'm going to do i'm going to use a little throttle and then we're going to get our car started with a little throttle let's see how this goes swinging the key Wow, this is not fake, this is an actual base map I just created for you guys. As you can see, I'm going back to the fuel table, I'll show you the very same fuel table. Created. This is it. I think it's a bit rich. I can tell, I can smell the fuel, so we don't even need to. We don't even need to wait for it to warm up to start removing fuel. So I'm gonna take out 20%. highlighting the entire map oh come on I'm gonna take out another 20% Point you allow your car to warm up. You can see we are at 40 degrees. We'll pick up when we have some more heat in there. Yeah, just wanted to show you guys we idling very, very, very rich. Uh, we cycling between about 10, 8 to 11. It's really, really, really rich. Uh, so as anything else usually going to hurt the well in my case it usually always hurts my spark plug so just for safety I'm gonna take out another 10% in there it's a bit difficult to do with one hand guys idle 
change we went up to like an 11.5 still pretty rich but we're going to allow it to warm up before we make any more changes to the fuel run okay so we are at 50 56 degrees celsius about now what we can see we can see our idle cycling this tells us that we are a bit rich i'm lean sorry so instead of going to try to tune your car now what we do we throw some fuel back in it just to get it to idle because it'll more than likely cut off before we get to operating temp so we throw back the 10 percent in there idle sort of stable out still a bit lean but it should get us within the ball back matter of fact let's throw an extra five percent in there like i said it's easier to be on the rich side and remove fuel than to be on the lean side ah come on So I threw another 10% back in it and as, if you look at the map, if you observe it, you will notice that we're almost back to where we started. Um, so what this tells you is that we could have left the map really rich as it started and as it warmed up, it would have, um, it would have leaned out the map a bit. So we're within the ballpark now, we'll just let it to get, we'll just allow it to get to temp and then we'll pick up with some idle tuning and we'll wrap it up okay so we at operating temp 75 degrees and if you look at my fuel ratios we can see that the car is pretty much set i would go into normally i would go into the map and then tweak the idle a bit but um if i'm just trying to create a base map i'll probably throw in another five to ten percent on it here just so we can get a little something richer and uh, to kill the haunting a bit and then the car should be pretty good to drive around at this point you you do a couple pulls well not pull sorry you drive your car around you notice your fuel ratio in what portion of the map you idle it and then you add and remove fuel accordingly um, i won't go into detail in this video but this one is it was essentially just to get you guys started so again we're idling at 1100 rpms down to in, down into the 12 wow so the car is warmed up so it's now getting to where it needs to be so we might not even need to add fuel yep so hope this helps somebody